This episode of John Joe Lions Reviews is sponsored by City Ruins Apparel. Go check them out on Instagram at City Ruins Apparel and visit their store at cityruins.com. He's dead, honey, because mommy killed him. The goddamn force of nature. I am the writing on the wall, the whisper in the classroom. They're coming to get you, Barbara. You see, Jason was my son. And today is his birthday. Sid, don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. Every review is getting worse and worse. Darker and darker. My name's John Joe Lyons and today I'm here to present to you my review of 2006's Slaughtered Vomit Dolls. I'm starting to question this whole path I'm on at the moment. A path lined with the bloody and vomit covered corpses of evil and innocent alike. A path that I chose to take in an effort to confront, understand and analyse the genre that I love with every fibre of my being. To seek out and witness the absolute worst of the worst. The path that has finally led me to this film. Written and directed by Lucifer Valentine, because of course that's his f***ing name. Slaughtered Vomit Dolls stars Amira LaVey and Pam McCartney among many others. I'm just going to start with the IMDb synopsis. The gruesome tapestry of psychological manifestations of a 19 year old bulimic runaway stripper turned prostitute as she descends into a hellish pit of satanic nightmares and hallucinations. I don't quite know how to begin with this one. I'm a little bit lost for words. I'll tell you this, I was genuinely anxious about watching this movie. I was literally trembling as it started up, no exaggeration. I hate throwing up, seeing people throw up, or hearing people throw up. I know no one's a massive fan of vomiting, but for me it's a real issue. So John Joe, why the f*** would you sit down and watch a movie called Slaughtered Vomit Dolls? I hate myself. And unfortunately, this movie has a reputation of being almost unwatchable, which means it belongs right here, in my mind, forevermore. I don't really know what else to say. Let's just crack on, shall we? The film begins with shots of a young girl, presumably our lead Angela, as she sings a song. These shots are intercut with scenes of violence, the adult Angela introducing herself, her occupation as a cool girl, and her sleeping. We also see Angela laying down, making a declaration of love and dedication to Satan. We then cut to a shot of a naked and intoxicated Angela sitting on the toilet, falling on the floor, and then asking the cameraman for help. Almost as if she's asking us for help. And then to address Angela, exiting the bathroom and then stripping. Cut to a character called Pig who dances naked before having her eyes ripped out. Scenes of her eyes being torn out are then cut with shots of Angela, both young and present. I believe this character to be a representation of Angela, at least her perception of herself prior to her bulimia. The tearing out of the eyes being the removal of the perception of herself as that person. Pig then vomits onto a glass table when we see the eyes in the pool of vomit. Cut to Angela vomiting and then offering her services before stripping off. Cut to another woman being strangled and tortured, which again is intercut with scenes of Angela sleeping. The tied up woman then has her face cut off, removing the mask and showing the real her. Showing what's underneath, which is important. So I'm on camera? There's much more to this world than living humans. We spend the next section of the film cutting around between Angela vomiting, pole dancing and stripping, showing Angela's life before turning to sex work. We then cut to a woman explaining to camera how she became bulimic. Cut to the same woman having her arm cut off. Now, stick with me here. There's a moment where the person torturing her places a guitar in front of her. While it doesn't really figure into my analysis, this did make me crack up laughing. As dark as it is, I kind of feel like this is a moment of levity, or at least the closest thing in this film to visual humour. By this point, you've been so bombarded with madness that you can't help but laugh. Well, at least I couldn't anyway. We then meet the man who cut off the arm as he uses it to make himself from it. Oh. The man then vomits into a pint glass, drinks it, vomits, drinks it, rinse and repeat, and this was the only moment in the film where I literally had to look away. No, don't drink it. Don't, you f***ing drink it. Don't drink, no, no. 
I can't. I literally can't. It was by far the worst moment in the entire film. We then see Angela stripping, dancing, then cut to a woman having her throat slit and then continuing to dance. Don't know if that was Angela or the actress that played Angela or maybe a visual representation of Angela killing off that part of her life. Angela then again strips, taking off another layer before we cut to a man coughing up blood and being tortured. Then having his brain removed, which another man eats and then throws up into the hollowed out head. Perhaps this could be read as Angela purging her intelligence? Or being rid of the mind that could have taken her far, were it not for the choices she made or was forced to make? Finally, we flash through a montage of Angela in all the stages that we've seen before, deteriorating and falling apart until we finally settle on a morose looking Angela with rope tied around her neck. She gets into a bath and drowns as we hear a siren and then cut to the young Angela. The child turns her back on us and the film ends. I know, right? This movie was like a nightmare ripped out of somebody's mind and burned to a DVD. It feels like every aspect of the film was meticulously designed to cause discomfort to the viewer. The aggressive editing, the erratic sound design, the bursts of sudden gore, the shockingly beautiful performance from Amira LaVey. This isn't just a movie filled with screaming and repulsive violence. This is a film that tries to turn the trauma of the lead character into a physical form. A visual nightmare that takes Angela and strips her down persona by persona. Each death representing another face that Angela has worn throughout her years. Each identity dying as she strips herself down over and over again, layer by layer. This isn't just about people vomiting. She is the girl having her eyes ripped out, the girl being choked, the man filming, the cannibal, the bulimic. This is a story about a human being purging themselves of all the pain and misery that they've been subjected to, ripping off and discarding the false pretenses and finally washing away her own sins as she lets go. This isn't just a film, this is Angela's suicide note. That's my read anyway. As you can see, I had a real tough time watching this movie, and honestly, when it finished, I wasn't a fan. But after having a couple of hours to think about it, I can honestly say that I think I f***ing loved this movie. Yeah. I f***ing loved this movie. And thank the Dark Lord that I did, because this is just the first entry in a series of films about Angela's descent into hell, culminating in the Angela chapters released in 2020. I hear things only get worse from here. I'll be reviewing every single one of these films over the next couple of months with breaks in between. This isn't like August Underground, you can't just watch all three of them in a row, like, you need time to f***ing reflect. But yeah, I recommend it. It's not for everyone, it might not be for anyone, but I loved it, so do with that information what you will. I know that I listed the scenes that are in the film just because I wanted to give you a sort of idea of what you'd be going into, but the experience of actually watching it, like I said, the editing, the sound design, all of those things, like it, it needs to be seen, it needs to be experienced. Just and watch it basically. So that was my review of Slaughtered Vomit Dolls. Have you seen it? If you have, let me know in the comments below what your read on the film is. I imagine that there's loads of people out there that have different interpretations of the film and I'd love to hear all of your thoughts. But in the meantime, as always, like, share, subscribe. My name is John Joe Lyons. Stay frosty.